Infrared cameras are very useful tools for us to identify issues to enhance building performance. The reason why we need to have a whole array of different performance infrared camera is not because we are obsessed with it, it's actual performance difference between all these models. Let's dive into it. So we've got a lot of tools for doing our work in the space of building performance. Thermal imaging is just one of them and we rely on thermal imaging for quite a few different circumstances. We're really looking at anomalies. When we're doing our auditing though, we're looking at anomalies. When talking about thermal imaging, a lot of the time we got feedback from our clients. In their mind, they are thinking a thermal imaging camera can tell them the exact temperature and every single dot on the surface around their building. But in reality, it's not as simple as that. A lot of the time they think thermal imaging camera would give them superpower similar to the predators in the 80s and 90s, if you're familiar with that movie. There's something in those trees. But in reality, how do we use it? I mean, these things, they can't even see through glass, right? Their weakness for seeing through stuff is glass. Not only you are not seeing through glass with thermal imaging, it actually reflects like a mirror yeah. for visible spectrum. Looking at the glass, you see the reflection instead of looking through. See my hand? In some other circumstances, like in here, we created a opaque sheets of plastic here. And if we put some hot, water behind it. We can show you thermal image. Infrared camera can actually see through something that we, our naked eyes cannot see through. Look at this image. You can see that where my finger is pointing on the opaque plastic is actually seeing through to see the hot water behind. But at the same time, if I move downward, through a sheet of paper is blocked. It's not completely a myth that infrared can see through something, but it's not as powerful as a lot of the movies showing. Now, calibration is important for getting an accurate sort of temperature reading off a device, but what we're gonna do now is run through a demonstration to show that the calibration certificate isn't the only thing that can guarantee an accurate temperature of something. Well, the accuracy of the equipment is very important, but it is not the whole picture. How experienced are the operator makes a huge difference on the reading. This is a punger of hot water. And if we look at it now, it's sitting at around 64.8, 65 degrees Celsius. I put it behind a three millimeter wide slit to try to create some kind of obstruction. And if we use the thermal camera to look at that slit again, it will show you it's only reading like 45 to 50 degree. If I change the focus a bit, if the picture is out of focus, the reading go down to 37. In order to demonstrate the impact of um, the resolution of the camera, we are going to use a few different cameras to look at the same condition. So this um, camera is 1024, 768. It's uh, the a high resolution, high resolution flagship model from Fleur Teledyne, and currently is paired with a wide angle lens. Yep. So I'm getting 55, 56, 57 with a wide angle lens. I got a 44. This is a lower end thermal camera, E53. And it's with a standard lens. So the angle is not as wide as the previous two model. And it gives a similar reading compared to the E95 with a wide angle yeah, lens. Right. So yeah, it just goes to show high res, narrower lens will give you a way more accurate 
temperature understanding and you know before you even talk about whether this camera is in a calibrated state. And here I'm looking at the same condition with a low-end camera that is designed for a quick connection to mobile phone, the FLIR 1 Pro. And you can see the reading is only 35, 36 degree. And if I walk closer, and you can see the reading suddenly gone up to 58, 57. So up to this point, we know that the resolution of the camera plays a part on the accuracy of the reading, the field of view or how wide the lens is capturing the image also play a big part. And the third item is whether the image is properly focused. And the fourth one is if I look at this slit on an angle, suddenly I lose the, resolute, the, the temperature accuracy. It's the same distance, but when I look at it on an angle, then it's not really have a direct view to the heat source and it change. Having a good understanding of these four contributing factor is very critical, particularly in some critical thermal imaging investigation, such as when we're looking at freezer panel, a lot of the time, all that we are trying to find out is the leakage at the junction. And they usually a very narrow slit of imperfect sealant or a bit of missing insulation between panels. And therefore, the accuracy there really depends on the combination of all the factors that I mentioned before. And if some of the engineers not fully understanding how those factors impacting on the reading, they may fall into some kind of a false sense of security. When the thermal image tell them, well, the temperature difference between the abnormally and the standard panel is only, say, four degrees Celsius, they think it's okay. But they forgot when the investigator is looking at that abnormally is on an angle very far away. The temperature difference may be just averaging out by the good panel surface around it. So it can be very risky. And that's one of the reasons we spend a lot of capital to include a high resolution thermal drone into our arsenal to enable us to fly the thermal camera to a more reasonable distance at the correct angle to evaluate real temperature difference at those abnormalities. Just to copy what Joseph did with the Flow One mobile phone connected thermal imaging camera, uh, a little bit of time has passed now, but we're now with this camera from this distance, we're getting 50 degrees. Uh, the specimen is probably around about 60 degrees right now. I'll get a close up shot of this at this range which is around about half a meter it's it's at 60 degrees which is pretty much what the temperature is so you know when you're doing an audit on uh, sandwich panel joints can make a really big difference on the accuracy of the temperature of the joint so we've moved to from a, a wide angle lens to a more narrow uh, standard lens and now the temperature reading from the four meter mark uh, is around about 56 degrees which is way more accurate from this distance than the wide angle lens. The beautiful thing about wide angle lenses is that it's very useful for temperature differentials or anom anomalies, detecting anomalies on a wider field of view when you're looking at buildings. With the same camera, we're looking directly down it. Now it's gone down to 56 degrees, 57 degrees. I'll get a look at it from the side and see what temperature the specimen is now and it's showing 58 degrees, not much of a temperature difference. The other thing we're, we're pretty excited about releasing this year is a tool for actually editing thermal imaging photos on, on a web application. Analyzing and editing to Correct. make it presentable so it make it a lot easier for the reader of our reports to understand the key message is conveying through those infrared camera image. When you're auditing with thermal imaging, marking up exact locations of issues is absolutely critical so that we can actually solve some of these problems before they become an issue of icing up joints 
where uh, this becomes almost irreparable once you get ice inside these massive structures. Uh, you've basically got to introduce heaters and dry at the joint and then go ahead and repair it. And it, it might not be the same as what, what it could have been if it was done well the first time. Yes, and we also produce a calculator which can help other thermal imaging practitioners to work out how far a distance you are away from um, abnormally, what is the accurate size of the abnormally you can pick up. It's based on the resolution of your camera and the field of view. So as long as you got your specification of the thermal camera, we can give you how big a gap you can pick the temperature correctly. The main reason why we decided to develop our own thermal imaging manipulation tool is we just wanted something that was way more intuitive and simple to just get the job done. This software, which is a part of the EIR Envelope Integrity Reporter Suite, enables you to straight off the bat put your mouse over points on top of a thermal image and see what temperature is at that particular point. Nice and simple for temperature representation of colors, we've now got a histogram that we can easily apply colors straight onto a thermal imaging photo. And you can actually see where the colors are gonna be representing what temperatures straight off the histogram. The other special thing that you can do is obviously also put your branding on your own thermal imaging photos by just simply clicking a button and you can change the size of that. You can also go through and add temperature points or remove temperature points, adjust emissivity of temperature points for extra accuracy of temperature points that you might want to um, show off to a client. The other beautiful thing that is in our inspection app is overlapping and connecting thermal imaging photos with visual photos from your handset. So you get a way better quality visual photo overlaid on angles with a thermal imaging photo. That way we can report on temperature points off a high quality, high resolution visual photo in, in your reporting. So um, these are things to look forward to in 2025 that will be available to all thermal imaging auditors or inspectors worldwide.